The intent of this part three video is to expand the discussion on the Bombardier's integrated systems components to include the intervalometer, bomb release toggle switch, and the Norton bomb sight. These components are located in the B-17's Bombardier's compartment and are operated by the Bombardier. The Bombardier can choose to release the bombs at uniform release intervals, one at a time, or all at once. He can also select to release the bombs as armed or unarmed. An armed bomb will detonate. An unarmed bomb will not detonate. Bombs can be released from the bomber in one of three modes, train, select, and salvo. By late 1943, 8th Army Air Force's command had determined that greater overall bombing accuracy could be achieved by sighting the target with the best bombardier in each squadron. The rest of the formation would release their bombs when the squadron lead releases his bombs. Eventually, most crews had their officer bombardier replaced with a enlisted toggleer. The bombs were released by queuing off of the squadron's lead bombardier. The lead plane's first release bomb would emit smoke. The other planes in the squadron would release their bombs when they observed the lead plane's release smoke bomb. The Togelier does not use this plane's Norton bomb site, but instead will send a signal to the intervalometer to start the release sequence based on the group lead smoke bomb release. The Togelier sends the bomb release signal with the plane's bomb release toggle switch. Bombs released in select mode will be released singly by the bombardier. A toggle switch will send a signal to the intervalometer to release a bomb every time the toggle switch is rocked back and forth. If a train release malfunctions, the bombardier is to quickly set the intervalometer switch to select and manually rock the double throw toggle switch back and forth so the bombs will be released as quickly as possible. In a salvo release, all bombs are released simultaneously. It was standard practice for the 8th Army Air Force's B-17s to toggle release their bombs in salvo mode when dropping bombs on the formation lead. The bombs will strike the target in a spread based on the formation's planform footprint. The 15th Army Air Force's B-24s generally set their intervalometer distances to 7 feet when dropping bombs on the formation lead. This is due to the B-24 Bombardier Salvo release switch not in a readily accessible location. This partially accounts for the greater bombing accuracy experienced by B-17s over B-24s. The bombardier or pilot could release the bombs in salvo mode if emergency conditions require the plane to jettison its unarmed bombs. The salvo sequence takes about 15 seconds to complete. About 12 of those 15 seconds are to open up the B-17's bomb bay doors. Bombs are released to maximize damage spread of the target. The intervalometer defines the bomb drop timing interval. The time interval is based on the desired bomb impact ground spacing. The intervalometer is mounted in the bombardier's control panel. It is tripped automatically by the Norton bomb site or manually by the toggle bomb release switch. The intervalometer sends an electrical signal to the bomb release units in a predefined sequence and time interval. The lower bombs are dropped first. Prior to bomb release, the bombardier will input following information into the intervalometer. The number of bombs to be released. Due to weight and space constraints, not all 42 bomb rack stations can be loaded. A typical loadout of the B-17 consists of 12 500-pound general purpose bombs. The ground speed of the bomber at bomb release in miles per hour. This data can be obtained from the navigator's drift meter. The distance between the bomb impacts on the ground measured in feet. The bomb interval distances are set between 7 feet, small factory, to 750 feet, like a large marshalling yard. This value will be provided to the bombardier during the pre-flight briefing. The bombardier will pick the type of release, either select or train. Also, notice that the bomb impact spacing is not dependent on altitude. It is a goal that all bombs will fall on the target. The bombs will be released while flying in a straight line. The center of the release train will be the center of the target. This requires the first bomb release to strike at the closest edge of the target and the last bomb release to strike at the farthest edge of the target. The rest of the bombs will be evenly spaced between these two points based on the intervalometer's distance settings. The bombardier can either aim at the near edge of the target with the Norton bombsite crosshairs or by compensating with the trail on the Norton bombsite. If the intervalometer is in the select position, 
Each time the spring-loaded bomb release switch is rocked forward or aft, a single bomb will be released. In order to strike a target, the bombardier does not drop the bomb directly over the target. The bombardier will need to release the bomb two to two and a half miles prior to the target. The Norton bombsight is a complex mechanical analog computer consisting of gears, ball bearing shafts, and gyroscopes, which sort out the bomb's ballistic trajectory, accounting for many parameters. The bombardier will optically sight the target with the Norton bombsight's glass etched crosshairs. Characteristics of the Norton bombsight include Designed by Dutch engineer Carl Norden, over 2,000 parts, compensates for bomb freefall ballistics, altitude, speed, drift due to crosswind, and atmospheric conditions. Was claimed to be so accurate that the bombsight could place a bomb in a pickle barrel from 20,000 foot altitude. In real world bombing combat conditions, it never lived up to this expectation. Post-war analysis showed high altitude bombing accuracy resulted in approximately 30% of bombs landing within a thousand foot of their tar intended target. The bombsight is coupled to the B-17 C-1 autopilot system. The bombsight controls the plane's direction by keeping the bombsight's crosshairs locked on the target. Once the aircraft is in the correct position where the sighting angle matches the drop angle, the Norton bombsight will automatically signal the intervalometer to start the bomb release train. Because it was considered one of the most important top secret tools of the war, every effort was made to keep the en enemy from finding out how it worked. In reality, not only did the Germans have captured B-17s with working Norton bomb sites, but via their spy network, they had also obtained the blueprints before the war even started. If bailing out, bombardiers were ordered to destroy the bomb site by shooting it with two rounds from their sidearm. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.